49ers, the team to beat in the NFC. Kyle Shanahan in his bag with play calling last night. Hi there, everybody. Welcome into Undisputed. I'm Jen Hale here with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, good morning. You know what? What? If Saudi Arabia can shock Argentina in one of the biggest <laughs> World Cup upsets in, in the history it of the was. World Cup right here on FS1, then my Dallas Cowboys can go win this year's Super Bowl right here on Fox. Why not? That's what hit me this morning. You with me? I got to root. I don't know who I'm going to root yeah. for, yeah. but I have to root against them. Huh? Yep. Just think we could be there in Phoenix this year with those Cowboys. Nah, that will be, be great, mm -hmm. wouldn't mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. It'd be great for you. No, it would not be great. <laughs> it would not be great for me. It would not be great for Let's me for the Cowboys to win the Super Bowl. Be great for Fox. Let's yeah, jump right in. It would be great for Fox. <laughs> that is, ironically, dovetailing right into our top topic for today, the 49ers, Skip. They absolutely rolled over the Cardinals last night. No issue. Jimmy G throwing four touchdowns in a 38-10 to win. San Fran now sits third in the NFC playoff picture. That's behind the Eagles and Vikings, but ahead of the Buccaneers. All right, Shannon, you first. Rank your top four teams in the NFC right now. Well, what I tried to do, Skip, was not be a prisoner of just look at the body of work, look at the eight, nine, ten games that the teams have played and not just look at the last game. And so what I came to, I got the Eagles at one. Um, they're fifth in offensive ranking, they're second in defense. Fourth in points scored, seventh in points allowed, fourth in red zone efficiency, number one in takeaways. So I got them in the number one spot. I put the Cowboys in the two spot because I, I like what they do. They're, they, they take the ball away. They're number one in points scored. They're seventh in points. They're uh, no seventh in points. Uh, first in points allowed. Mm -hmm. Seventh in points scored. You can win with that. And they're giving up a little less than uh, 17 points a game, and they're starting to take the ball away. Obviously, we know what they do. They sack the quarterback. I got the 49ers in the, 49ers in the third spot. Eighth in offense. They're the number one ranked defensive team. Fourth in points allowed. They don't take the ball away, but they did get two last night. And so I like what I'm seeing. And the way Kyle called the game last night, and with those playmakers, you saw Christian McCaffrey getting involved. You saw George, a sighting of George Kittle, who's had to get down, a down year. Debo is Debo. Yep. Some way we got to find a way to get him the ball, and Brandon Ayuk showed up two catches, two touchdowns last night. And, Skip, this was really tough for me. I almost put Tampa in the fourth spot. But their red zone efficiency offensively is not where it needs to be. They don't score enough points. And so even though they got demolished on Sunday, I still got the Vikings in the fourth spot. I've searched high, low, trying to find another team. But the teams in the NFC are really bad this year. They only got a handful of them that's, that's, that's played consistent football throughout the course of the year. So I put the Vikings in the fourth spot, followed by if we had a top five, I would have put the, middle, uh, uh, the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the fifth spot. But – the thing that I don't like about the Vikings, they're scoring 23 points a game, but they're giving up 23.1 a game. So that's why they're minus. They're the only team that's 8-2, and two, Skip, but they got a minus uh, uh, when it comes to points scored versus points allowed. Mm. Okay. I find this whole concept fascinating. Mm -hmm. I find your ranking fascinating. In our Super Bowl repicks, I think you repicked San Francisco to win the NFC. Yes, yes. And I anticipated you would leap to the conclusion after what we saw last night no. that they are the best team. Nah, Skip, not with, I mean, no, no, Kyler Murray. I didn't expect them to do a whole lot with, come on, Colt McCoy. Yeah, I, 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 he, he's actually played pretty well, but he is still Colt McCoy. Yeah, and he, I agree. he was out there limping around. It seemed like every time they hit him, he grabbed a different body part. So I didn't expect much from them last night. And the 49ers did what I expected them to do, which was pound them. And they looked really good in doing it, but I wasn't going to overvalue. Them. I still believe when it's all said and done, they'll be the team, but just not right now. Just okay. not right now. All right. All right. I'm going to deal with the 49ers first. Okay. That is an offensive juggernaut that Kyle has at his fingertips, and he is part of it because he's just the best there is yeah. at preparing, at strategizing, and then at improvising on the fly, yes. at play calling. There's nobody better than Kyle Shanahan, right. whom you watched sort of grow up in your <laughs> locker room as your head coach was Mike Shanahan, yep. his father, who I still think has – significant input into he, these game Oh, he absolutely does. He right? spent a lot of time at, at the facility. Okay, so ESPN pointed out last night that, that they are the yak attack because in the careers of a Kittle, <laughs> in, in the career of a Debo, in the career See of a that. McCaffrey, that, that they all lead the league in, in their time in the league in yak yards at their positions. Yes. 
Okay, I, I get it because every time you look up, Jimmy G is throwing some underneath th something to somebody, and they're just well, busting loose. Well, Skip, right? that's the West Coast offense is predicated on that. Let's get the ball into our playmaker's hand. Yep. You make a guy miss, you make things happen. If you look at Jerry Rice, most of his, a lot of his stuff was yards after the catch. You look at anybody that's been in that system, been it with Brett Favre and and and, and uh, Rodgers or Donald McNabb. Look at Patrick Mahomes. That is the West Coast system because that's what Andy trained up under. So you look at their. You mentioned Kelsey, another guy, yards after catch. All these guys are yards after catch, and that's what you have to have in this system, guys that can run after the catch. And every time I, I test San Francisco's defense, it looks potent and physical and fast to yep. me. But to your point, in – in turnover differential, which is a telltale stat, they're not that great. No. They're, they're tied for 21st in the NFL. They're minus one. Right. Okay. Does that contribute back to, or is it attributed back to their quarterback to a certain degree? Right. So my issue remains with the 49ers, as much as I fear and respect Kyle and the weaponry and the defensive firepower, you still have Jimmy G at quarterback, which is still shocking to me because I thought he was gone, and now now he's at the helm, and and they're <laughs> near the top, I, right? Well, well Skip, we, we debated this. I said, Skip, I don't know why they're thinking about getting rid of him. And you can say, okay, Jimmy G, he doesn't have that it factor or that 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 clutch gene, but he's one of the most unclutched guys that's gotten this team to a Super Bowl that we've ever seen. That's he true. did that. I'll buy that. And like you said, they had a 10-point lead. They were about 12 minutes away from winning the Super Bowl. And he missed the throw that might have would have got him back into the ballgame or kept them in the lead. So with that being said, he still has that, like, yeah, I understand. And he got a team to a, a, a NFC Championship game last year. He went to Lambeau. Now, he, he it's, did. it's not as much as we thought it was, Skip, going to Lambeau and beating Aaron Rodgers. But he did do that. I also think he's dangerous because he knows they wrote him completely off. Yes. And he knows he's sort of on borrowed time because he knows that Trey Lance is still the future. Right. So this is just gravy for him. He, he looks like he's playing about as freely as any quarterback in the league because well, what does he care? Right. He, he knows his days are numbered anyway, right? But he's auditioning. There are 31 well, he's other auditioning. teams. <laughs> there are yeah, 31 no, other teams auditioning. But, but he just looks like – it's free time for yeah. him, right? Mm -hmm. It's on. We watch the the big football matches, as in right. soccer. Right. You know, they get stoppage time. Yeah. It's like he's in permanent stoppage time, right? He's <laughs> just on on a lark right now, yeah. doing what he does the best he can do it. I still don't trust him at the highest level. Okay. So now back to my ranking. I'm all in on my Dallas Cowboys. Okay. You can say I'm complete prisoner of the moment, and you well could be dead right. Right. As Jerry Jones said in his prelude to his Super Bowl talk that he did right after the game, he said, we, we've suffered adversity. We very well might suffer some more adversity. Right. Well, they might. Right. I also think they have a potential. When, when I look down at it, we're going to break it down a little further when we get into our next block here on the show. But I still think there's a potential for the Cowboys to get on a roll and win out. Right. Starting with yesterday, uh, uh, Sunday, obviously, at Minnesota – then, uh, obviously, they need to take care of business against the Giants, and then they get their little mini bye, and then they get Indy, and then they get Houston at home, so they got a three-game set at home. Right. And then, all of a sudden, they go to Jacksonville, winnable, obviously, yeah. and they come home for a revenge game against the Eagles. Then they have to finish on a Thursday night at Tennessee, which is right. It's tough. It might be as tough a game as they're going to have all year. Right. You could you could make the case for. Yeah. Because they are so physical, and it's going to be cold at home against that – you be, yeah, you got to you, you yep. bring your big pads because you got to tackle. They've had a hard time stopping the run all right. year. And then they have to finish at commanders who have found themselves all Correct. of a sudden okay. under Taylor, Tyler, Tyler Heineke, right? Correct. Okay. So I'm buying Dallas, even though statistically I can't really buy them, except that they're, <laughs> they're number one in sacks and they have allowed the fewest points in the NFL. That's yeah. what I buy. So I buy – I buy Micah and company. That's what I buy. And, and we'll get deeper into it. it. It feels like the offense is starting to find itself. Obviously, Dak is back at quarterback. Tony Pollard is emerging as a superstar back to me. So I'm going to go Dallas number one. I got San Francisco, and maybe I'm prisoner of that moment last okay. night. And I agree with you. The, the, the Arizona Cardinals are just crumbling right before yeah. your very eyes. It's, yeah, but they, they quit, Skip. They were playing last night. George Kittle caught a ball, and they got two I Cardinals so, on the sideline. I'm like, what? They just quit. Yeah. That's how, Skip, that's how you get cut and get your coach fired. 
because the GM and the owners looking at that like they quit on him. They okay. quit. That Skip, they quit. And I don't like saying that because I've been a player. Skip, they quit last night. There's no way in hell. You're not going to even push him out the push him out of bounds. You're not going to dive at his feet. You're not going to even make an attempt. At least like the camera's watching. Let me like, yep. attempt like I want to tackle him. Skip, they let the man go down right down the sideline. You're, you're on Monday night football. Yes. Right? You're in Mexico City, even though it felt like a 49ers home game because, boy, those 49ers are faithful. They're everywhere. They, they, they're, they, they're, they're rivaling the Cowboy faithful, Yeah, right? but Skip, you, you're, best around to get, you're best around to get Cliff Kingsbury fired before the season's over. I believe he's done in care. I believe he's done after this season. You but you mess right. around and you, you keep putting stuff like that on tape, yep. they'll fire his ass before the season's over. Okay. I got it, but that was still a showcase last night yes. of everything right about the 49ers. So I have them second. Okay. And maybe I'm undervaluing the Eagles. <laughs> they struggled the last two games, Skip. They're starting to show signs of vulnerability. Yeah. The last two games. And it went to the wire, obviously, in Indianapolis, and Jalen Hurts said, no, I got you. Right. And he's gotten them all year, and, and he got them again. But you read the numbers off. They are number one in, in the turnover ratio, which it, 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 they're plus 12. It, it's just the telltale stat. It tells you how good or bad a team right. is. They are plus 12, number one in the National Football League. You can't argue with that. But, Skip, there's something the last two games, though. They had three against Washington. They, they had it three on Sunday. So that's six when they only had three coming into the week. Okay. Think about that. They had three, and all of a sudden they got nine. That's concerning because the it turnover is. thing is starting to happen I more would frequently. Agree. But our Bible, Pro Football Focus, it has them ranked number one in offense and number one in defense. Well, it's, it's hard to argue with that right. because they've been doing that at a high level all year, except for these little signs of weakness right. here the last two weeks. Just hope they hadn't peaked too soon. Okay. It, okay. I, I have said this from day one. I believe my Cowboys will get even with them on Christmas Eve at Jerry World. Okay. 